My Lady Lolita and a couple of others have asked, you know, why is Linux the least used operating system? And I already addressed this in a previous video. Um, those that use Windows every day due to financial constraints probably have not heard of Linux or they probably have heard it but only on a server level and of course once you get up there you get very technical and that can scare a lot of people off. I am here today to show you that Linux is not scary. In fact, it's actually quite great. Um, I believe I have a video up there why Linux is better than Windows, but I can't remember. Maybe I took it down. If I did, let me know and I will basically redo it. But um, this is sort of a first-hand look. We'll start with the applications. A full barrage of accessories. You can pause the video here. Um, at any time to take a look. One of the things I will highlight though, we're going to come back to this, is the terminal. So we have a whole collection of games. And if you um, want to find out what, another, what a game is, for example, Gnometris says here, fit falling blocks together. Uh, Lango or Iagno, I don't, I don't know if that's an L or an I. Excuse me. Pardon. Dominate the board in a classic version of Reversi. So that's basically your games list. We've also got full graphics um, management. We've got F-Spot. We've got the GIMP, which is an equivalent of Photoshop, though a lot of people say it's not quite on the same level as Photoshop. It's still, uh, from what I hear, pretty powerful. Um, you've got OpenOffice.org drawing. You've got the Xsane image scanner. Under Internet, you've got Ikiga Software, Evolution Mail, Firefox, Pigeon, uh, which is your instant messaging client, Remote Desktop Viewer. Skype is something you'll have to get on your own, but it's actually very easy to install. All you have to do is click on the package, then a dialog comes up asking if you want to install it, then it will extract it and install the various components, and you're ready to go. And what's even better is that it actually, um, unlike Windows where it just scatters it all over the place, it Linux will automatically put it right where it needs to be. So if Skype is an Internet app application, it puts it right, right, right where it needs to be in the Internet apps. Um, we've got a terminal server client. And we've got a transmission BitTorrent client. Uh, one note I will make about Skype before leaving this. Um, the microphone can be recognized, but it may take some tweaking depending on your system. Webcams, though, at least as far as I know, do not work with Skype on Linux at this point. Because I think in general, webcams do not, do not get along with Linux. I think it might have to do with proprietary drivers that Microsoft has put in place. But, um, you know, we shall see. We've got a full office suite, and we've got a dictionary. We've got evolution email and calendar. We've got openoffice.org presentation, which is your PowerPoint equivalent. We've got openoffice.org spreadsheet, which is your uh, Excel, and word processor, which is your Microsoft Word equivalent. And everything that I'm showing you, with the exception of Skype, it all comes with Linux. Everything with the exception of Skype all comes with Linux. Sound and video, we've got the Brazero disc burner. We've got a movie player, a music player, which is Rhythm Box, and a general sound recorder. Incidentally, if you want to do a sound recording, if you want to do a test of your, of your microphone and you don't want to bother with Skype, this would be a good way to do it. Universal Access, the Orca screen reader and magnifier. This comes with Linux. And in case anybody on my list is a screen reader user and has not heard of Orca or heard Orca speak, I believe the <coughs> excuse me, the speech on the newer versions of NVDA is the same as it is in Orca. It is the eSpeak. 
uh, synthesizer. It comes by default. Um, I do not have any extra synths to download because um, I don't know where to pick them up. Um, that are free anyway. And uh, I just stick with what it comes with. But in case anybody, anybody has not heard of it, I'm going to go ahead and power it up. Welcome to Orca. Orca screen reader slash magnifier frame preferences button. Okay, now I'm just going to tab and quit out of here. Incidentally, this font, by the way, this is um, something that you can tweak in the system preferences. And I did this because of my vision. The font is roughly about half the size of what you're seeing. Um, so. Tab, quit button, space, quit orca. This will stop all speech output and screen magnification. Cancel button. Tab, quit button, space. Okay. You've also got, um, you can go to places. You got your home folder, your desktop, your documents, music, pictures, videos, it's all here. You can go to the main computer, you've got your, like I said, you've got a CD, DVD creator. You've got access to the burner, which through a virtual machine, you can have it, um, I've got it uh, basically linked to the MacBook's super drive, and um, if I were to pop a disk in there, it would go ahead and recognize it. Uh, we've got network, connecting to a server, searching for files, and recent stuff. This, incidentally, is the installation file for Skype, if anybody is interested in it. And that is the location. Now, I told you that we were going to come back to the terminal, and we are, so... Let me just quickly run through system, and like I said, you can pause the video at any point to take a look. And those are the final menus. We've got help and support, about GNOME, log out me. Now we're going to go in here and we are going to go into accessories and terminal. Now the terminal is not scary. Let me give you an example. We're going to go and I'm going to type in Lynx. And Lynx is a web browser for the terminal. I'm going to type the letter G. Type a URL. Let's go to google.com. And there we are. Now you use up and down to navigate through the links. It's all text. No ads, no graphics. So let's type in Linux. And you'll notice at the bottom here you got a, um, a, uh, exact, uh, where the URL is located and where you'd be going. You push right arrow to activate the link. Come on, there we go. And, uh, this is basically all the, uh, Searches for for Linux. It must have got, it must have given us ah here here's one. Silverlight for Linux hits with Microsoft Punch. <laughs> but as you can see, it's all text, no ads. It's it's actually quite nice. If you want to get to the menus, you just hit Escape. Now one of the beauties of this web browser is the fact that it will not. To get out of the terminal, you hit exit. One of the great things about the, the browser, the Lynx browser, is that it will not keep your history no matter what. Um, one of the things to keep in mind, though, is that it is a bare-bones browser. Um, I do not know what the story is on downloading stuff. I think you can do it, but I don't know what happens. I, I don't really try it that often. That's an experiment. Um, you cannot play YouTube documents. And for those of you who use Web Campus, you cannot use Web Campus on... Uh, links. But that's the terminal. It's basically text-driven everything. But anyway, that's a little overview of Linux. I don't know what the story is on time, but I better shut up, otherwise I might have gone too long. Uh, Lady Lolita, I hope that answers your question. Also, anybody else? Questions are welcome. Uh, thank you for watching, and have a nice evening.